What's going on everybody? It's your boy Cesar. We are talking about three different mining stocks today. We'll be talking about Clean Spark, Marathon, and Wolf today. Clean Spark at the request of Navi and DB, Marathon at the request of DB, and Wolf for Tariq Melham. Uh, I think it's Tariq, not Tyreek, it's Tariq. Um, I have I've actually have a friend named Tariq. Maybe you're him, man. I don't know. Do you live in Denver? Do you work for the cannabis industry? If so, you know me. But if not, you know me now. Nice to meet you. Anyways, um, without any further ado, let's get into this, you guys. Yes, Clean Spark, what a day. You know, um, I, I didn't make any videos yesterday because I, I wasn't here. I wasn't at home base, and I was aware of the price action and everything. Um, you know, let's look at Bitcoin real quick because these miners, they're not 100% correlated to Bitcoin, but Bitcoin dumps, these things tend to dump. Bitcoin pumps or is moving sideways, these things tend to pump. I think we found our high on Bitcoin. I think that's the high. If we were to move higher, just a little bit more, like maybe another thousand bucks or so, and what's a thousand dollars on a forty-three thousand dollar asset? But I feel pretty confident. I mean, looking at this RSI, I'm going to make a video later talking about this, um, but so I don't want to go into too much detail. Spoilers, but it makes sense, man. Like literally, put a line right there. If it walks like a duck and it squawks like a duck, it's probably a rejected crypto going down and with that i would assume that these miners are going to go down as well we don't even need to look at bitcoin really to know that because if we take a top to bottom there's actually nothing really oh hey we hit the 0.5 there you go and close below the 382 today yeah that's not that's not really positive structure to me i mean this you guys want to know what a bull trap is this exact thing man it's like it's really it looks like a fish hook just like that but like truly it's it's still it's exciting, right? It's exciting because it almost comes out of nowhere after seeing this onslaught to the downside. No no breath of fresh air at all. This finally is your breath of fresh air. And from low to high, you moved up 44% in the course of like from January 19th to January 29th in the course of 10 business or 10 days total. Um, it's really exciting. But then you, you zoom out, you look at it, and you're like, oh, wait, it's just a lower high in the trajectory that we're going down. We still have lower to go. This is a lower high and a downtrend. What's next? A lower low, right? At the best case scenario, a higher low or some kind of double bottom. But I don't think we're going to get that. I do think we're going to see a lower low. I think that most of these mining stocks are going to be moving down through February into March. Potentially, they find their lows in March or April. It is possible they could find them in February, but I'm, I'm not so optimistic. You know, I was a little bit thinking that back here, but as we, as time's gone on, as I've done more like research into and, and, and analysis into Bitcoin, I've, I kind of assume that a lot of these, not all of them, but most of them and maybe all of them, as far as mining stocks goes, will continue to move down. We won't find the lows for a lot of these stocks until March or April is my thoughts. And it could be later for some of them. It really could be later. And that doesn't mean that that is the end of them. You know, it's just sometimes things uh, take their time, you know. Nonetheless, if we look at Clean Spark for what it is, you've got in a longer term uh, scheme of things, you've got higher lows on higher lows. You've got higher highs on higher highs on higher highs on higher highs. We're probably coming down to form a higher low, right? It might be that low. It might be that low. I doubt. I doubt that it's like a double bottom. That just wouldn't make sense to me. It, it seems to me like we're in some kind of like upward channel. Those lines are not straight at all. But you, you see what I'm going for, right? Um, yeah. This week, it's kind of. I, I feel like. I don't remember. Check if I'm wrong. I'm not. I'm not like trying to brag, but I do. I, I'm trying to like state facts. I feel like I did say. I know this week I said that we would go up. Like this week, I was like, the next week will probably go up. I feel like at the end of the last week, I said we might start the week off green and then finish it red. It was was my thoughts, and maybe I said maybe we close it green, but my thoughts were start it green and close it red. It looks like we're doing that, right? At least at least right now, there's still three days left in the week. It says two days, 15 hours. There's still three days left in the week for stocks for this thing to completely. It could go up. It, it could close higher than than that uh, high there. But in my opinion. This this look just right here, it, it makes sense, man. I feel like that's that's the rejection zone. We literally tipped the 0.5, um, <laughs> tipped it, tipped it, and we closed below the 3A2. That's from a fit perspective, that's not a friendly look. That would generally mean that you're going to see extensions off of that level, off of that bull trap, and it really does, man. It just looks like a bull trap. Uh, 580, 511, something like that. And if we were to base it off of this current trajectory that we have here, something like that, right? You know, ah, probably not. I mean, 
with that, you could go lower. <laughs> you really could. 464 ain't off the table, but I feel like I feel like we're not going to find our low that quickly. So maybe we lose this trajectory. Maybe we meander a little bit down, something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Hard to say. With a bull trap, to be completely fair, in nature of a bull trap, I, I feel like it's very common to move down pretty fast afterwards, but that doesn't mean you have to move fast after, like, like move down initially fast. But you don't have to. You can meander. I, I, I'm having a hard time with this, man. I'm scratching my head a little bit. Who cares how it moves down? It's going to move down. That's my genuine opinion. That's all I'm trying to say. It's probably genuinely going to move lower. Um kind of in that 50 area, whatever. You've got, it's, it's not a higher high, but you're basically tied up with this, right, on, on an RSI basis. And look at how far below you are there. That, that's a form of like hidden uh, bullish, hidden bearish divergence, my, my bad. Um, and one last thing, while I'm fumbling on all my words. Um, you know, this whole time moving up, since we found our low, our cycle low, cyclical low, and we started moving up in this uptrend. You know, we were in the beginnings of it. We didn't even know it here, but we were in the beginnings of it. The first higher low was below the green line. The next higher low was below the green line. So our next higher low, I would expect, would be below the green line. And this low also came into play if we put it in right here. Came into play with this area of resistance pretty well, right? So maybe we come down and we find support in this previous area of resistance as well that comes in, you know, that's, that's a pretty good line. So I would think maybe between 511 to 470, 469, that's, that's totally possible. I'm going to be letting go of my put options when I see the price below $6, maybe 620, um, and fully expecting it to go down here. I'm just going to let go of that cash out and then wait for the price to go down here and then I'm going to buy back. That's, that's my stuff. That way, if we see any movements come up, I can not worry about it so much and just be happy that I capitalized on my on my gains. Um, and then if, you know, heaven forbid, I'm, I'm wrong in this and it does move back up and it convinces me that we are going to move up, I can buy still cheaper than I sold up here and still, you know, like double dip to a certain degree. So um, put yourself in good positions, man. That's 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 all that's all I'm trying to do. Uh, but that, that's CLSK. I think it's going to go lower. I very do confidently believe that it's going to go below that green line, which right now is sitting at about 615. So I do think we're going to go below there. Um, let's move on to Marathon. Uh, to answer your questions, uh, you know, I probably should have answered this in the beginning, but no, I'm not, I'm not concerned with these moves up, guys. I do think it's going to go lower. Um, rejecting the 50 area, kind of. You didn't quite reach it. You don't have to. You really don't have to. Also looks like a bull trap, to be completely fair. Hit that 382 on a strong move down. Hitting that 382 is common, and then boom, you go lower. Where are you going to go? Let's see. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Higher low, probably around $10.50, $11, 10 to $11, something like that. Top to bottom, 1131 is your 69, 1258 is your uh, 618. Yeah. You could, you could go all the way down to about uh, just below $10. That is possible as well. But I would look at that $12.58 to $11 area as a real possibility. And probably, yeah, sometime in March is what is what my thoughts are. So it's not going to happen overnight. But if it does happen overnight, if we happen to find our lows in February, which, again, I don't expect, but if we do, that doesn't mean that it's upside immediately, right? Like, here you found your low in the beginning of October, it was October 2nd, you really didn't start, like you moved sideways, you had ups and then you had downs, but you didn't really start to move up until this week, which that was the end of November, right? Like that, that's the week that you really started to move up. Here you were just in the same range that you've been in, right? You recovered a little bit. If you want to say it's there, cool, it's the beginning of November, you know, the midway point of November, where you found your low in October. So I don't know if it'll take that long. Maybe it looks exactly like that. Maybe it looks a little bit different, but I don't expect something like this is all I'm trying to say. Um, you probably, once you find your low, you probably meander and then you move up. That's that's my thoughts. Um, it could look exactly like that. It might look completely different, but let's look at the daily real quick. Yeah, the RSI to me does look bearish. Yes, it does. And I already went over the fibs. Yeah, I think it's going lower. What more can I say? Not much. So that's that. And we'll
we'll move on to Wolf, finish it up with Wolf. You guys, you know, a lot of you asked me uh, which stock, which crypto mining stock I like the best, and I feel like I've made it clear I do like CleanSpark probably the most. Is it the one that's, that saw the most gains out of, all the, out of all the mining stocks? No, it's not. Since it's like relative lows, no, it's not. I think Riot is actually. I think Riot has seen the most gains, and it's one of the bigger blockchains or uh, bigger mining stocks. I don't think it was Marathon. Maybe it was Let's see. What did Marathon do? Oh, damn. Marathon did pretty good, too. 655? What was Riot? Oh, no, this is Wolf. That's, that's not Marathon. That's Wolf. Okay, so Wolf, Wolf did pretty good, too, which is also why I like Wolf. Oh man, Riot, yeah, killed it, killed it, right? Oh, that's the wrong, I'm sorry guys, man, I'm all over, that. that's the cycle, that's the last cycle. 525, okay, so Wolf actually did better than Riot, maybe it was Marathon. Did I mention it's the end of the day for me? Okay, so it was Marathon, I, I had it backwards, I'm sorry, I had it backwards. So Marathon, which I think, if Marathon, it's either Marathon or Riot that has the bigger market cap. Let's see. 400 or 4 billion. Riot. 2 billion. Yeah, it is Marathon. So Marathon's got the biggest market cap, and it saw the most growth from its from its lows this year. So, um, you know, with that in mind, even though it's the biggest market cap, Marathon might be the play, guys. It saw the most growth initially, but sometimes... That, that doesn't always mean that it's going to see the most growth throughout the whole cycle, right? But let's, let's actually look real quick before we move on to Wolf. I want to just get an idea here. All the way up to 204, 637, something like that maybe. From the current price, it's a 10x, 11x, to a 36x. Clean Spark. From the current price, I know it's, I already know these extensions. It's a little bit more than uh, Marathon's potential smallest one, and then Clean Spark's like Clean Spark's biggest one is like up here, about the same. So yeah, I, I kind of like Clean Spark more as far as that goes. Um, and then Wolf for potential. I know I didn't draw the fibs on Clean Spark, you guys, but I, I was just going off of levels that I've already identified in a various amount of previous videos that that. That, that 100 to 300 level is kind of what's what's to be expected, um, is all I'm saying. And it's not exactly those numbers, but more or less. Wolf looks like it could gain a lot more, man. It really could. And it has the lowest market cap of the three, so seeing those kind of gains would make sense, right? 452 million. Um, that, you know, to see a 10x would be 4.5 billion. That'd be exactly where Marathon is now. So if it saw like a 100x, That'd be 45 billion. That'd be pretty insane, but it is possible, you know. And it wouldn't even take 100x to see the 1272. So this is why I am a little bit interested in Wolf. Clean Spark probably is my favorite at the moment, but I've I've thought about uh, once I take my my profits on my put options with Clean Spark, I might rotate, roll some money into Wolf. That's that's my genuine opinion. Look at that volume, man. It's it's really beautiful. It's a lot of volume. Not gonna lie. Um, but it probably goes lower. It probably does go lower in the more immediate term. Let's see. <laughs> Rejected the overbought zone. The weekly RSI isn't really giving me much to go off of, but I do think it goes lower. If we look at this top to low here, 786 rejection, 236 support. Hey, that's not bad. I'm not going to lie. That's not bad. Uh, let's look at the daily. Not giving me much other than this hidden bearish divergence. High here, higher high. High here, lower high, hidden bearish divergence, lower high on the trend overall. Kind of fits that bear trap look that the other two have. And relatively speaking, top to bottom, that's not it. But high to low, 0.5 rejection. At an area also where you've found support before. Potentially finding resistance here. Yes, you closed above it, but you can still find resistance in this area and call it, call it square. You know, found resistance here. You're kind of in that same area there. I think you're going lower. I do. Probably lower than that low. The minimum extension that you would see would take you if that's the high, and I do think that's the high, somewhere around a dollar ten, potentially just below a dollar at about ninety one cents, and I think that'd be the extent of your your movement down. So you could see about a fifty percent drop from here. 
45 to 50 percent drop, something like that, um, probably. I just did my math real quick. It might be le it might be less than a 45 percent drop. 43, 43 percent to 52, something like that. Yeah. Um, but that's it. That's all I got for you guys. So, um, as far as which ones I like. You know, I think they're all good. I think all three of these are actually probably going to be top performers out of all the mining stocks. But you never know, man. There's BTBT, there's BitFarms, there's BTCM, there's uh, Cypher, there's SDIG even. Uh, what's another one? I mean, obviously Riot. There's there's more than just those. I can't, I can't think of the other ones right now. Um, Argo Blockchain maybe. I bet, the, the ones that have my my most interest really would be Wolf and Clean Spark and honestly Marathon. Marathon's got me a little bit interested because that's like the premium, that's like the, the blue chip of all of these, right? And it's it's definitely shown some interest this uh, this cycle already. So who knows? That could be really good things, man. Even though it's got the highest market cap, you might see the most growth. And with the highest market cap, normally not always, but normally comes the most security. So a little bit of interest there. Don't be like me and get deterred from things that have the the higher market caps in a group of of stocks or coins because uh you know that's normally how I play by it. I like to go for the lower cap stuff, but there are there just because it's a higher market cap doesn't mean it can't grow more than the lower market cap stuff. It's less common, um, but it's not completely uncommon. I, I don't you know it, it does happen. It does happen pretty often. So. Um, Anyways, I'm, I'm just talking at this point, so that, that's all I got for you guys. If you like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. I think they're all going down. They all have lower lows to go, and it won't happen tomorrow. It'll happen over the next month, the next two months, something like that. We might find our low as early as the end of fe uh, February, but I'm thinking more middle to end of March, potentially even early April is what I'm thinking. But um, I, would, I would think we do find our lows in March, and even if we find our low, that doesn't mean we're moving up immediately. We're going to move up. We're going to consolidate for a little bit and then move up is, is my genuine thoughts. So with that, I'll leave you. Take care. Hit that like button. Bye-bye.